and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up. It's not going to be much of a wrap up because I have been too busy playing Baldur's Gate 3. Literally, it has taken over my life. So much so that I have become like, it, you know, people say you are what you eat. Well, um, turns out you can be what you play as well. I've been playing as a half-elf druid and this morning I woke up to find I had ears like an elf. Dream came true. <laughs> so the first book I finished in February was a graphic novel, The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. It is literally the most wholesome and cutest thing ever. It's inclusive, it has disability representation in it and it's basically a cosy fantasy book about tea dragons which are basically tiny pet sized dragons that you can like harvest herbs off of them so like they grow on their horns and stuff and you can make tea out of the herbs that you gather from the dragons cute um it's set in a fantasy land so there's all manners of creatures and people with different identities and yeah it's just wholesome and very very cute so if you've got young kids or you just love reading this kind of thing then i wholeheartedly recommend it next i read a manga and that is cat plus gamer volume one by Wataru Nada Tani and so this is basically a manga about a 29 year old office worker who is like a office worker by day gamer by night and a cat comes into her life and so it's basically a stray cat outside of the office building and someone comes in and is like someone needs to take this cat and for some reason this woman who has a very busy life as it is suddenly is compelled to volunteer and then takes the cat and so basically the manga charts her experience of raising a cat without having any clue on how to do it and yeah it's just kind of wholesome and cute and like cats do i need any other reason to read a book about cats no I don't. Yeah, so they're the only two books that I finished. I have been listening to an audiobook of The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami, and me and this book have a weird relationship because I did start reading it two years ago, maybe longer ago. It was like one of the first books I actually started talking about on this channel, and I was like, yeah, I'm like really intrigued by it, and I love Murakami. I mean, I think I've read like five Murakami books, but for some reason I just stopped reading it one day, and so then I decided that I need to like get rid of my currently reading list which is ridiculous like I think there's an unholy amount of books on that list um so I was like oh yeah I need to kind of like read this book so I thought I'd listen to it on audiobook to catch up where I got to with the book and then perhaps finish it by reading it or just finish it by reading the audiobook I kind of remember now why I stopped reading it because it just gets so convoluted there are so many meanderings so many like secondary stories and it's cryptic as fuck what the devil is going on it's so dream-esque and so like in my mind when I'm listening to this I kind of think um David Lynch movie when and like it would be cool if he could direct a movie in Japan with Japanese actors kind of like what Vim Vendors has done recently with Perfect Days I haven't seen the movie yet he's a western director and he's directed a movie in Japan and like for example I know that Pak Chan-wook has directed western movies um, Stoker and then he also did a TV show The Last Drummer Girl or the f something Drummer Girl, The Little Drummer Girl. It's possible so can like David Lynch do a wind wind the Wind Up Bird Chronicle? Can we get that to happen? Because it just feels very Lynchian and I can just imagine how he would direct it and it would very much be fucking brilliant probably. But yeah like the book's a bit annoying for the fact that it's just like oh and then Sal suddenly we're gonna pause the action and then go to the story of some old man oh and then we're gonna listen to Mei Kasahara I don't know and the narrator does the worst voices ever like Mei Kasahara is like this childish voice Ishikawa is literally like a demon from hell he's like Nyeh. it sounds like that slug thing from Monsters Inc but like a dude version and it's just literally it's like an ear rape basically it's just oh god here we go Ishikara's back yeah so like the the audiobook is less than ideal but it, it's an intriguing one I mean Murakami is a very fascinating author and I do enjoy his books but I also sometimes find them a bit frustrating and that's what I'm feeling with 
Wind Up Bird Chronicle. I think I'm like 89% through, so I'm nearly there. I'm just, I need to get over the last hurdle. And then the last book that I've been reading, these are all, I've, I've had a very Japanese inspired month, which is kind of weird because I recently got a journal from a Japanese country, company, um, the Hobonichi, although someone corrected me in my last video because I've been saying Teko instead of Techo. Idiot! So I got the Hobonichi Techo 2024. Um, have I written in it since getting it? Not really. <laughs> so I'm already like a self-fulfilling prophecy of failing to fill in my diary, but I, it's the weekend now that I'm filming this. I've got a couple of days off of work, so I might try and do some then. Um, but yeah, back to books. And this is a book by famed game creator Hideo Kojima, and it's called The Creative Gene. And I think this is really fascinating. I found it in my the library that I work at. Now, I think I was just looking at books about games because I wanted to make the, the gaming section better at our library because it's a bit, a bit lacklustre. So I ordered some D&D books in a World of Warcraft visual guide, which I've got and I haven't looked at. <laughs> um, and then I saw that Hideo Kojima had made a book and I was just like, huh? I haven't actually played any of his games, really. I have recently downloaded Death Stranding, but I kind of want to play that when I have figured out how to stream on Twitch, because I feel like it's a very cinematic and kind of cool game, so I kind of want to experience that online. We'll see. But um, And then I also used to play with my sister on our PlayStation, like Metal Gear Solid, but only the training level, because we liked the music and it was easier. <laughs> than the game. So we just used to play the training level over and over again and we liked the music in it. And then we also liked the fact that you could like knock on things to distract the guards, but yeah. So I'd like kind of known of Kojima for quite a while, but what intrigued me about this book is it isn't necessarily about him and games. It's about the media that has inspired him over the, the expanse of his life so far. Um, so it says how books, movies and music inspired the creative Death Stranding and Metal Gear Solid. And I am not quite halfway through, but you know what? The man has got fucking impeccable taste in books. I've added so many of these books that he's just literally talking about onto my reading list. Cause I'm like, uh, dude, you love science fiction? Me too. These sound fucking awesome. And like he's also talked about a lot of Japanese literature, which quite a lot of it unfortunately hasn't been translated into English yet. But some of the books sound just absolutely phenomenal. So this is actually a really cool read if you're intrigued about Hideo Kojima's kind of taste in books and things that have influenced him and also just to get book recommendations from someone who's obsessed with books. Because apparently, I don't know whether he still does it, but he used to visit a bookstore every single day without fail as part of his just daily routine sir what a legend yeah so i am actually really enjoying this and i think it's cool that someone who is known for like one thing has decided to kind of divulge and write about his love for other types of media i think that's really cool i have only watched three movies in february and one of them was a rewatch. and one of them i should have continued with the other two movies but i started playing Baldur's gate 3 and i didn't watch them and that is the fellowship of the ring i always go fellowship of the ring two towers return of the king back to back over a weekend for full kind of appreciation and still being able to get on with other things but i didn't because i've i've li i'm literally addicted it's so much fun if you are thinking of playing the game and you're like oh i don't know whether i'll like it fucking play it just play it just play it and lose all semblance of reality and just become so obsessed with it that literally when you get home from work you turn on your computer and you play it until suddenly it's 10 p.m at night you're like oh shit gotta go to bed because i've got work in the morning or you could be more responsible than that <laughs> but actually i've been quite good because i've only been playing it after 5 p.m every day but yeah so i watched the lord of the rings fellowship of the ring didn't continue on with the most amazing tri trilogy of movies ever created i will probably watch two towers next month or this month now. I will continue at some point. I know them back to back and all the way through and like can quote half of them anyway so it's fine. Then I watched In the Mood for Love because it was showing at a cinema near me. Hello? 
one of my favourite movies ever showing at a cinema near me and it's not in the English language. Thank you. <laughs> I fucking adore In the Mood for Love. Wong Kar Wai is such a sumptuous, gorgeous, thoughtful director and I'm just so glad that I have been able to watch such a masterpiece on the big screen. Loved it. Love it. Watch it if you haven't watched it because everyone needs to watch this sumptuous, beautiful, gorgeous, melancholy, romantic movie once in their life. If you watch it at least once, we can continue to be friends or we can be friends. If you refuse to watch it, you are dead to me. It is sensational and I am obsessed. Yeah and then the final film I watched was Wicked Little Letters. I think it actually is like based on a true story so it's about this woman who starts receiving these absolutely vile sweary slutty letters <laughs> and it's kind of like an investigation of who's been writing them. Uh, her neighbour is suspected because she uses like slightly vile language and she's a bit rowdy and sort of unfeminine as to like what society deems as a feminine woman should be. And it's ultimately quite a funny little look at um, female friendships coming together as women, supporting each other and also looking at male control and female autonomy it's yeah it's, it's quite good i mean it's got olivia coleman and jesse buckley in it as the two leads uh, but everyone involved is like pretty great in it and it was just quite a fun little movie to watch on a tuesday night and i enjoyed it so they're all the movies i watched then we're going to quickly talk about two two tv shows because that's all i've watched this month because of bald escape the call of Faerun is too much to resist okay I did start watching this when it first came out but then i forgot to talk about it in my january wrap up but it is delicious in dungeon which is a anime based on a manga it's on netflix and it's basically like based on dungeons and dragons but it's like a cozy gourmet show and so basically they go into this dungeon and this dwarf shows them how to cook monsters so that they can survive and sustain themselves on the things they're killing in the the dungeon and there's an elf character called marcel who is absolutely disgusted by this and like freaks out and screams and is like no i don't want to eat it which is how i probably would react if like someone shoved a giant spider in my face and were like this is your dinner i would probably cry and scream and run away and die <laughs> i'd rather die than eat a spider <laughs> just the thought that in some cultures i think in a a Southeast Asian country I'm, I've forgotten where exactly it is but like deep fried tarantula is a, a delicacy no no I I'm very intrigued by like cultural foods and things like that but that that's this is a step too far I will never try that so I hats off to the people that are like this is a culturally significant food to us but i'm sorry no madness absolute madness a spider no no it's like that's another reason why i can never step foot in australia no i'd rather die a bit over the top but yeah anyway uh what was i talking about oh yes tv shows and then the next show i watched is a korean language show and it's called a killer paradox and it's a show about a guy that accidentally becomes a serial killer, as you do. And the police officer who is trying to track down said murderer. It was pretty decent. Uh, in the middle it kind of got a bit like muddled and kind of took a turn in tone. That I kind of was like, oh okay, I'm not sure about this. But yeah, no, it was it was pretty decent. And I think they're going to be doing a season two of it as well. But yeah, at some point I will be doing like a video of like my top Korean dramas. Because I think I've like watched over 50 at this point. Maybe near to 100. <laughs> a lot of the time I do start Korean dramas. But then I never finish them. Because sometimes the writing just goes a bit annoying. Because they very much tend to fall into tropes. Like, for example, I was really enjoying Marry My Husband, but then, like, a white truck of death 
came along and I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, are we really going to those kind of stereotypical moments? I think I've got like one more episode to go, so I will watch it soon. I need to catch up with some of my dramas, but that is it. So shall we talk about Baldur's Gate 3? Literally the best game I've ever played. I love, 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 um, what's it called? <laughs> World of Warcraft. Who is she? I've forgotten her already. But this is on a whole different level. It's immersive. The lines in it are so funny. Like some of the companions that you run around with, <clears throat> Astarian, are literal like comedians. <laughs> Everything you do has consequences or changes the story. Or if you do just one slight different thing, your whole story branches in a different direction. I've made three different characters. I've got a, like I said earlier, a half elf druid, who is like my main playthrough. I've got a drow bard, who's like a bit of a joke playthrough because he's a bit of a slut. <laughs> and he's trying to fit everyone and then i've also got another drow because i just thought they were kind of intriguing and like the way people interact with you they're either like scared of you and try to murder you immediately or they're like let me just do everything for you so yeah she's a drow rogue warlock because i'm trying like dual class in with her and each time there's been different things that happen kind of accidentally like in the first playthrough i accidentally talked to a goblin in the goblin camp and he got annoyed with me and so then he started a whole fight and so then i didn't get to go and speak to minethra minethra the drow bitch <laughs> who was gonna lead an attack on the grove. But then when I played with my drow, I managed to free the goblin and then follow her to the goblin camp. And then she introduced me to Minethra. And then a whole raid on the grove happened. Everyone nearly died. The spiders that I freed in my previous one came along and had fucking attacked everyone. <sighs> chaos, absolute chaos. But yeah, like it's just so fun. I'm currently into the Underdark and it's fucking scary. One moment I went round somewhere and there's like one eyed monster who just obliterated my whole party. So I was like, um, load. And so then I'm trying to Again, but I'm not going that way. <laughs> but yeah, I love playing as druids in games because you get to turn into animals. And at the moment, I'm trying to unlock the ability to turn into an owlbear because owlbears are the cutest things ever. Because I've actually got an owlbear cub in my camp. I've always got Scratch the Dog. Cute. I like to reload a game because I thought I'd lost him. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's, it's brilliant. If you haven't played it, play it. Devote your life to it. Sacrifice your social life, your mental well-being. <laughs> to play this game if anything actually it's like made me feel a bit more happy playing this because it's like oh i've got something to look forward to at the end of the day which is kind of cute but yeah anyway the light is fading outside and Faerun is literally calling to me so i need to go i've got quests to fulfill i've got a tadpole to remove from my brain before i turn into a mind flayer and i've also got to pet my dog scratch so thank you for watching let me know what you've enjoyed in this video whether you've read any of the books that i've been reading or shows movies etc and also let me know what you've been consuming this month and also have you been playing Baldur's Gate 3 are you obsessed let me know what characters you've been playing as, any weird choices that you've made that have just had far-reaching consequences. Who's your favourite companion? Obviously mine is Astarian because he's just a sassy bitch. Um, I also do like Gale but he's like fucking annoying at the same time. Obviously Karlak is the best and Will, I really like Will as well and like his warlock powers are fucking crazy. And he's the best person to buy things from traders because he's got that charisma. Anyway, <laughs> I need to go. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Farewell. <laughs>